What gives crystals their shape? Why does this crystal look like this and this crystal look like this? Or this? What makes them have seemingly perfect looking geometric shapes? This starts out by looking at their atomic structure. One of the requirements for a material to be considered a mineral is that it has to have an ordered internal structure. This means that the atoms within that solid have to be crystalline, aka they have to arrange themselves in a specific pattern throughout the whole material. So that pattern repeats itself over and over and over again. So when we're looking at a shape of a crystal, we always bring it back to that internal structure on a very tiny tiny level. The way that this crystal broke or cleaved made it break along certain planes, these flat planes, to make it into this seemingly perfect rhombohedral shape. There are a few different characteristics of minerals that make them look certain ways. For example, the cleavage, the fracture, the way that a crystal grows as it crystallizes, and this always can be brought back to the crystal structure. And minerals are grouped into different crystal systems based on the symmetry of those patterns. There are six major crystal systems that minerals are categorized into. Sometimes scientists split it into seven because there are two that are sometimes grouped together, but there are six major ones and I'm going to talk about them while using marshmallows and spaghetti to build little models of their symmetry to show you a 3D version. I remember when I was in fifth grade, I think, there were these engineers that came into our class and taught us how to make 3D structures out of marshmallows and strawberries strawberries and we had a competition of who could build the biggest one without it falling over and it was really fun so i summoned that idea again and i'm going to use that to talk about minerals i don't even really like marshmallows <laughs> I thought of a good idea for a little challenge for you, so just leave a comment down below for what you think each of these shapes would be. So as I go along in the video, just think about it and see what crystal system you think each of these belongs in. These little crystal balls that hang from the window actually reflect the light really pretty and I noticed they had a bunch of crystal faces on them even though they're man-made and I was curious about which crystal system they belonged in so let me know what you think. So the way that we explain the symmetry is by using axes. These are called crystallographic axes. So for the isometric system, the symmetry is that there's three axes of the same length that are all perpendicular to each other. So I have three pieces of spaghetti that are about the same length. This would be the first axis, which would be the A axis or A1 or the X axis. Oh, there's a lot of different ways to label them. I'm gonna say this is A1, A2, and A3. They're all labeled with an A because they're all the same length. They are perpendicular to each other. So the angle between this one is about 90 degrees and so is this one and so is this one. So as you see, there's symmetry on all these directions because they're all the same length and the same angle to each other. If I were to continue this pattern and if I built more marshmallows and spaghetti onto here, Okay, so this isn't the most stable thing I've ever built in my life, but you can see for the most part that the angles are 90 degrees to each other if I hold it the right way. Each piece of spaghetti is the same length. So this would be called a unit of a crystal lattice. So when a bunch of these units repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and stack on each other, that is what we call a crystal lattice. And a crystal lattice is what gives us those crystal faces. Some minerals, like pyrite, will actually have an external appearance or crystal habit that looks the same as their internal crystal structure. So in this case, this is a cubic piece of pyrite with an external cubic appearance while also having the internal cubic structure of its atoms. So there's actually one mineral that I would deem a catfish mineral and that is aragonite and it actually has something called a pseudo hexagonal crystal habit meaning that it has this external form of having hexagonal crystals. It has six sides on the crystals but it doesn't mean that it has a hexagonal crystal system. It's actually in the orthorhombic crystal system. The reason that it has these six-sided crystals is because of something called twinning. And another interesting thing about aragonite is that it's actually a polymorph of calcite. And these two minerals are actually the same exact chemical formula, calcium carbonate, but they have different crystal structures. So while aragonite is orthorhombic, calcite is trigonal. 
And speaking of trigonal, next I'm going to talk about the trigonal crystal system, which is very similar to the isometric crystal system. And I don't even have to build a new model for this because all of the axes in a trigonal crystal system are the same length. It's just their angles change. So none of them are perpendicular to each other. None of the angles are 90 degrees. So it kind of just makes this cube a slanted cube or a rhombus. So in this case, I guess it's good that what I built wasn't very stable. <laughs> So the next one is tetragonal, and the only difference between tetragonal and isometric is that two out of the three crystallographic axes are the same length, and all of the angles are 90 degrees. So instead of the isometric or the cubic system where there's four different squares as the faces, there's two rectangles and two squares. So next we have the orthorhombic crystal system, which is also pretty similar to the tetragonal system because once again, the angles are at 90 degrees to each other. Let's just pretend that these are actually 90 degree angles because I know that this is not perfect. <laughs> the angles are still at 90 degrees to each other, but in this case, the axes are all gonna be different lengths. So I'm gonna replace another set of these axes so that they're all different lengths. I don't know if you can see. This would be the orthorhombic crystal system because every single, okay, the angles are not really cooperating. So all three axes are different lengths. This one right here is what I just replaced, that's the shortest one. And then I have the one right here that's like kind of in the middle, and then I have this long one. So there's three different dimensions, three axes, and they're all different, but the angles are still perpendicular to each other. They're still at right angles. And building off of the orthorhombic crystal system is monoclinic, where all the axes are different lengths like this, but instead of them all being at 90 degrees to each other, they're all different. I'm gonna make another simple diagram of this. So I have three differently different lengths of axes. And in the orthorhombic system, these are all 90 degrees to each other. One, two, one, two, three. That would be orthorhombic. And monoclinic would be... So monoclinic would be like this. <laughs> A and B are at a pretty obtuse angle to each other. <laughs> okay, so these two pieces, these two axes are at a pretty obtuse angle to each other. Can you see it? They are not at 90 degrees to each other, but this is still perpendicular to this one. That would be 90 degrees. And then these guys are also still 90 degrees to each other. So there's still right angles happening, but not everywhere. <laughs> So this is orthorhombic, monoclinic. Orthorhombic, monoclinic. And a lot of minerals are actually monoclinic. I think this is one of the most common crystal systems. Orthoclase feldspar is actually one of the main rock building minerals and that is in this crystal system. We also have muscovite, gypsum, malachite, azurite, jadeite. So triclinic, once again, just like monoclinic, has three axes that are different links. My other model I made is getting really gross because the marshmallows are just drying out and getting stale, so I'm gonna make a new one. For a triclinic, we have three, tri. We have three different axes, again, that are all different lengths. I'm gonna do this one a little different and kind of just do it through the middle. So that would be one axis, and then another one that is not perpendicular to anything. So none of the angles in this are 90 degrees. This makes this crystal system the least symmetric out of all the crystal systems. It just looks like it was just stabbed with a bunch of stuff at random angles. And then lastly, we have the hexagonal crystal system, which I already talked about the trigonal system, but this is the one that is sometimes grouped in with trigonal. And that is because it has very similar symmetry to the trigonal system, but there are four crystallographic axes instead of just three. So when you think about the hexagonal crystal system, just think about snowflakes. Snowflakes have six different points and they are symmetric. So even though snowflakes have different patterns, they grow in different shapes and different patterns every time, they have the same exact symmetry because they have the same crystal structure. So yes, that means ice is in fact a mineral. I'm hungry. <laughs> So the hexagonal crystal system, when you make a model of the unit cell, it has one plane where three axes are all on the same plane. Um, a lot of the ones I've been talking about, there'll only be one or two axes on the same plane at the same time. There's 
three axes all on this plane. So I could put this on a piece of paper, I could draw it on a piece of paper because it's 2D on one plane. But when I connect this to another axis, this is the hardest one to build. <laughs> you actually have to connect this plane to another plane. So there's this axis that goes straight up perpendicular to the rest of the other axes in that plane. That took a little bit longer than the other ones. But as you can see here, three of the axes on this one plane here, and then the fourth axis is this one right here going perpendicular to this plane that all the other axes are on. So yeah, I have this 3D unit cell for the hexagonal crystal system that is now falling apart. So the next time you see a crystal and you're wondering why it has a certain shape, remember that it always goes back to these 3D diagrams that I showed you of the different crystal systems on the tiny level of the atoms and how they're arranged. So just a little review of the crystal systems. This is the isometric system or the cubic system where all of the angles are 90 degrees and all of the axes are equal. Then we have the trigonal system where all of the axes are the same length and none of the angles are 90 degrees. So this is kind of just a slanted cube or a rhombohedron. Then we have tetragonal where all of the angles are once again 90 degrees, but instead of all of the axes being the same length, we have one of the axes being a different length than the other ones. So two out of three axes are the same length and all of the angles are 90 degrees. And then we have the orthorhombic system where all of the crystallographic axes are different lengths, but all of the angles are 90 degrees. Next, we have the monoclinic system where all of the axes are different lengths, but there's only one different angle. So there's two right angles and one angle that is not a right angle. Next we have triclinic, which is the least symmetric out of all of the crystal systems, and that is because every single one of the axes are a different length and none of the angles are 90 degrees. And lastly, we have the hexagonal system, which is sometimes grouped in with the trigonal system because it has very similar symmetry, but the difference here is that the hexagonal system has four axes instead of three axes. So now I'm going to go use up the rest of the marshmallows and try to decide if I actually like them or not. I hope this helped you and thank you for watching.